In the last lecture, we had discussion on Nyquist rate and Nyquist interval and we found the Nyquist rate is the minimum sampling frequency omega s or fs which is required to recover the message signal back from the sampled signal and omega s is equal to twice of omega m where omega m is the maximum angular frequency component of the message signal and fs is equal to twice of fm where fm is the maximum frequency component of the message signal now in question if they ask you to calculate the nyquist rate in radians per second then calculate omega s because omega s is having the units radians per second and if they ask you to calculate the nyquist rate in hertz then calculate fs because it is having the units hertz so this point is clear we have discussed it in the previous lecture and we also solved one example now in this lecture we are going to understand few important properties of nyquist rate so let's begin with property number one and in property number one we will understand the effect of time shifting on the nyquist rate for that let's say there is a message signal empty and this message signal empty is having the nyquist rate equal to fs in place of fs you can write omega s as well the property will not change property will remain same for both the frequencies empty is the message signal it is a time domain signal and if we perform the time shifting operation on empty we will have a time shifted signal the first case which is empty plus t naught is the case of left shifting we are shifting empty towards the left by t naught second case empty minus t naught is the case of right shifting we are shifting empty by t naught towards the right and in both the scenarios we are going to get the same nyquist rate which is fs so time shifting will not have any effect on the nyquist rate it will remain same and this is because the frequency does not change when you perform the time shifting we have already seen in the basics lectures that whenever you perform the time shifting the whole waveform will shift towards the right or towards the left but the shape of the waveform will not change and therefore frequency which is fm or omega m will remain same and therefore you will get same omega s or fs so this is all for the property number one and now we will move to property number two and this time we will perform the time scaling operation on the message signal mt and the message signal is having the nyquist rate equal to fs and we will scale the time by a and in this scenario we are having a new message signal and this new message signal will have a new nyquist rate and the new nyquist rate is equal to a multiplied to the old nyquist rate so here the old nyquist rate is getting multiplied by the amount by which we are performing the time scaling for example for example let's say we are having a message signal which is xt and this message signal is having the nyquist rate equal to omega s and if we perform the time scaling and we have a new message signal x2t then the new nyquist rate will be two times omega s let's take one more case this time again we are taking the same message signal and we are performing the scaling by 1 by 2 so we have x 1 by 2 t we will have the new nyquist rate equal to omega s divided by 2 so i hope property number 2 is clear to you in case you perform the time scaling on the message signal the nyquist rate will get affected let's move on to property number 3 in property number 3 
we are having the same message signal empty fs is the nyquist rate and this time we are changing the message signal empty to empty power n we are having a new message signal and what will be the nyquist rate for this new message signal the nyquist rate will be equal to the old nyquist rate fs multiplied by n so in this case you can see that the old nyquist rate is getting multiplied by the power for example for example if there is a message signal xt having omega s as the nyquist rate then xt power 2 will have the nyquist rate equal to twice of omega s now it's time to move on to property number 4 in property number 4 we will perform the differentiation on the message signal and we will have dmt over dt we are performing one time differentiation on the message signal and we will get the nyquist rate equal to fs so there is no effect of differentiation on the nyquist rate let's move on to the fifth property we are having the same message signal empty and this time we will perform the integration let's perform the integration of the message signal and like differentiation this time again the nyquist rate will remain same the sixth property is the last property and this property is very useful this property is very useful along with this property this property is also very useful in sixth property let's take two message signals m1t and m2t m1t is having the nyquist rate fs1 m2t is having the nyquist rate fs2 and we are having another signal mt and mt is the message signal which is equal to the product of m1t and m2t now in this scenario if you want to calculate the nyquist rate of mt let's call it fs then fs will be equal to the nyquist rate of m1t which is fs1 plus not multiplied like we are multiplying the two message signals the nyquist rate of second message signal fs2 so fs will be equal to fs1 plus fs2 when the two message signals m1t and m2t are multiplied this property is important and we will solve few questions using this property so this is all for this lecture if you have any doubt you may ask in the comment section i will end this lecture here see you in the next one